Good day, Gladiator family. I'm Principal Diaz, and I would like to welcome you, parents, guardians, family, friends, and staff to the graduation ceremony for the E.C. Goodwin Technical High School Class of 2020. Okay. And now, I would like to turn things over to Mr. Lynch. Kiana Torres, president of the Class of 2020, will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would everyone please stand for the national anthem? time I would like to introduce class salutatorian Anastasia Hunter. Hello everyone, my name is Anastasia Hunter and I'm proud to be the salutatorian of the class of 2020. I would just like to start off by saying how pleased I am to be having a graduation today. I know there was a time when it was in serious doubt. I would like to thank Mr. Granja for all the hard work he put in to make this happen. I can't believe how quickly we've adapted to a world with COVID-19. Well, I've known that the new normal was going to be face masks and hand sanitizer. Even though, in the beginning, this virus did not seem as much as a threat to us, things took a turn for the worse. This pandemic has not been easy on anyone during these past few months. Foremost, I would like to send my condolences to anyone who has lost a loved one throughout this time. Losing someone you love so suddenly is never an easy thing. I'd also like to thank all the essential workers who risk their lives every day for the community. Take a moment to thank everyone in your life for their service during this pandemic, no matter the occupation. I still remember the last day of school, March 13th, 2020. Everyone was joking about how we were going to enjoy a little two-week vacation. Little did we know that was going to be the last day of senior year in the halls of E.C. Goodwin. No one asked for this to happen, and we should take a minute to acknowledge our feelings. The end of our senior year was very depressing. I constantly hear others telling us to keep our heads high, in control of our emotions, but being part of an adult is acknowledging your feelings, so let's do that. We worked 12 long years to get to this goal, graduation. We were so close to the finish line, and it seemed like the rug was pulled out from under us. All year we were told to try our hardest until spring break, and then our payoff would begin. Yet, we didn't get any of the rewards we were waiting so long for. No prom, no outing, no senior breakfast, no graduation practice, none of it. So take your moment to reflect and be upset, and then consider the words of the late author Napoleon Hill. Hill once said, every adversity, every failure, and every heartache carries with it the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit. Times are definitely tough right now, but just know that things are going to get better. We should take all this negativity that we have been forced to endure and turn it into positivity. If any class is able to turn this around, the class of 2020 is it. 
Remember, we were brought into the world right after a tragedy, 9-11, and grew up accepting a changed world. Now we're faced with another tragedy on our way to adulthood. I know we can overcome this situation and prevail, no matter how difficult it may be. Instead of being known as the class without a prom, or the class that couldn't walk the stage at CCSU, let's be known as the class that took senior skip day to the next level. Or let's be known as the class that revolutionized education. After all, we are the first class in the history of the world who has distance learned online and been quarantined. We already knew, but I'll say it again. The class of 2020 is the best class that's ever been. High school has been a roller coaster. I've felt a mix of emotions throughout the years, and I often question my decisions about coming to EC Goodwin. I have come to realize that coming to Goodwin was the right move for me. Even though I complained about school, I wouldn't trade my high school experience for anything. The memories I made with that, my class are ones that I will never forget. I've done a lot to get to where I am today, but there are so many people who have helped me along the way. The support system I've had through high school was unbelievable. The list of people could continue on forever, but I'm going to try to make it quick. First, I would like to thank my shop family. You guys have been through my side and supported me no matter what. Even though we don't talk to each other all the time and we don't go out together tons of times, we truly molded into a family. No matter what reputation our shop has, joining Precision Machining was one of the best choices I've ever made. Even though there are arguments and petty drama here and there, we were always there for each other. When I was down, you guys were there to try to pick me back up, and I'll always appreciate that. I would like to thank all of my ECE friends. I've been in classes with you guys for four years, and it's going to be weird knowing that we're not going to need our group chat anymore to go over the answers for the discussion the next day. I want to thank everyone in that class who was rooted for me every time I climbed up the class rank scale. You guys are such amazing people, and I wish you all success in the future. To the staff at EC Goodwin, you played such a big role in my development. Every teacher I've ever had rooted for me to do better and push myself. They motivated me to be the best no matter what. There are way too many staff members to name, but there are a select few I want to personally thank. Ms. Yoga, you are honestly an inspiration to me. Your classes have helped me gain a level of maturity and growth academically. I hope one day I have one quarter of the wisdom you have. I'll miss having you as my instructor as I move on to college. Mr. Lynch, you have always been there for me. You looked out for me sometimes even more than I looked out for myself. You motivated me on the field and encouraged me to try every new academic opportunity. There are so many times I thought I couldn't do something, and you told me to try it anyways. You're one of the few people in the building I could truly rely on, and I will miss you. Ms. Valdez, I want to thank you for always being real with me. I know I could always trust your opinion, even though I know I'm stubborn at times. You always have my best interests at heart, and I'll miss our meetings. Don't worry, I'm not going to forget about you, and I will let you have your I told you so moment when the time comes. Mr. Kartnick, thank you for always encouraging me to strive better. You have, you have truly helped me through tough times. Even though our time together was short, you have still found a way to keep in touch with me. I'm glad you finally got the position you strived for. I know I can always count on you, and I miss you dearly. Ms. Maud Klein, even though we bumped heads sometimes, you always vouched for me no matter what, and I appreciate that. I would like to also thank Dr. Diaz and all the staff at Goodwin who fought for the seniors the best you could. I want you guys to know that even though some seniors may be upset, it is not at you. I know you guys are doing the best you can for us, and I'm grateful for everything you were able to do to salvage the end of our senior year. The last people I'd like to thank are my family. You all cheer for me so much and believe in me even when I did not believe in myself. I tend to doubt myself, but my family always shows me that I shouldn't. Even though they constantly tell me I inspire them, I want you guys to know that you're truly an inspiration to me. My family is so hardworking and loving. Even though we can't see each other all the time, we still find ways to stick together. I love you all. Most specifically, I would like to thank my mother, Jess Marie, and my father, Aaron. My parents are the definition of starting from the ground up. I've never, seen more, I've never seen people with more work ethic or more drive to do better. You two are truly the reason to my success, and I don't know where I would be without you. Thank you guys for giving me such a good life, even though you guys didn't get that experience. Thank you also for putting my sisters and I before everything else, and thank you for always believing in me no matter how many times I said I was going to quit. Even though we bump heads sometimes, I know you guys just want the best for me, and everything you do is for a reason. 
I will never forget every time I come home from a bad day and constantly talk down to myself. My mother would sit with me and listen to all the struggles. She then took it upon herself to try to help me in any way she could. Thank you for all these times. Thank you for always supporting me even when you didn't agree with my decisions. One day, I promise you I will be the engineer you know I can be. Even though I don't say it nearly as much as I should, I love you guys so much. You mean the world to me. I hope one day I can pay you guys both back and give you the life you always wanted. And I guess my speech has come to the final goodbye. Even though we might not talk to each other after graduation, every senior in the class of 2020 will be remembered. Personally, you have all helped me become who I am today. I wish you all success in the future. Give it up once again for the class of 2020. Thank you, Anastasia. At this time, I would like to introduce class valedictorian, Marilia Gonzalez. Good day, family, faculty, and fellow graduates of 2020. I am Marilia Gonzalez, Issa Goodwin's 2020 valedictorian. I am very happy that we are able to unite today and celebrate what we have worked so hard for despite the odds. Soon, we will all be holding our diplomas, a piece of paper that regardless of its fragileness holds a huge accomplishment, a paper that reminds us of the challenges we've had to surpass to get to this long-awaited day where we graduate from high school. As we move forward, we're all starting a new chapter in our lives. We will all follow different paths. Some of us will head off to college, others will join the army, and others will either choose to join the workforce or follow their trade. With the one you choose, be the best you can be. In the end, we only miss the chances we do not take. Never think you cannot do something. Never think you are not good enough. You can achieve anything with determination and perseverance. If today, for some reason, you do not feel like you are your best, that is okay. You can start working hard now to become the best version of you by becoming a person that makes you proud. Getting to this point is no easy task, and you might even stumble along the way but learn from these mistakes so you do not commit them again. Do not get discouraged, and instead, let's learn from the good and the bad. Let's see the challenges we face as just a stepping stone that we use to grow and mature into successful adults. Find your potential, defy yourself, and take risks. Life is a journey where we can learn something from each day. Like Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. We, the class of 2020, represent this. Let us keep it in mind as we continue to propel ourselves forward. Now, I would like to take a moment to thank my parents and the rest of my family for their continuous support and for always believing in me. I also want to thank Dr. Diaz, Mr. Lynch, and the rest of my teachers for all the efforts they displayed throughout this year. For all the motivational words during these difficult times and for working hard to honor us the best way possible. To my ISD family, Thank you for all the good times and memories we have created throughout these four years. Our high school lives conclude today. In the hallways of this school, we leave memories, experiences, laughs, and unforgettable moments. The things we have learned throughout these years will carry on throughout our lives. We are the senior gladiators that will never be forgotten. The ones that will leave footprints throughout all the hallways and classrooms of this school. We are the class of 2020. Today, as we say farewell to E.C. Goodwin Technical High School, we go out into the world knowing that we will forever be gladiator strong.
Thank you all. Thank you, Marilia. At this time, I'd like to introduce our principal, Dr. Annabelle Diaz. As your keynote speaker, I am very honored to be here to join you in celebrating this wonderful occasion along with your families, friends, and the Goodwin staff. Graduation is one of those steps in life that defines a coming of age, a new stage in which you are a leader, a doer, and an achiever in the wider world. I'm sure many of you have firm plans and have a good idea of what's coming next. Some of you have a pretty good idea of what you want to do, a dream and a lot of hope to get you there. And some of you are just amazed that you got to this graduation point at all. Well, the coming times will be exciting and will be trying, but it will be all dependent on you and your determination. Collectively as a class, you have demonstrated determination and grit to be here today. Today marks the beginning of a different journey. As I reflect on the current state of our nation, I decided that the theme for today's commencement speech is, I dare you to prove them wrong. This year, we started our social justice work with ACT UP Theater, an activist theater that focuses on the performing arts to change minds and hearts. In the sentence, I dare you to prove them wrong, the word them is a pronoun. And in this delivery, them will take up many meanings, such as self-doubt, negativity, self-esteem, stereotypes, obstacles, a fixed mindset, misconceptions, prejudices, poverty, implicit bias, racism, and pretty much anything you want to prove wrong in your life based upon your upbringing and or current challenges. I want you to think about the word them and create your own meaning by recognizing that in our minds is where the true battle begins that we really truly need to address. Do you know that out of 10 thoughts that come to mind, eight of them are negative? We need to start by doing a deep self-reflection of our them and start working towards building your own mental fortitude and strength in order for you to stand for a cause and no longer be a bystander, a spectator, but rather a person of action that will demonstrate passion, empathy, and integrity. This is your duty, your responsibility. I want to share a little bit of my story because we all have good stories to tell. Growing up in the city during the 90s was not easy, but I learned to navigate the streets to simply survive. I grew up with a fixed mindset, not aspiring to much, just wanted to finish high school because I wanted to be, I wanted my mom to be proud, not because I saw any value in it. It was just not cool back in the day to be the smart kid in the projects of Chowder Oak Terrace. The neighborhood at the time was filled with gang violence and drugs. To be honest, it felt oppressive. The only thing that kept a smile on my face during those hot summer days were my abuelitas Limbel de Coco, those homemade coco ices, the coconut ices, and of course, visiting shorties 10 times a day, the corner market where I used to buy penny candies after I had short change grandma's piggy bank. Anyhow, with these memories also came a lot of trying times. As I grew up poor, I knew that I wanted a better life but I simply did not know how. I lacked social skills and had massive academic gaps in my learning. I struggled with reading and I could not write to save my life. My family did not know any better, but they supported me the best they could with just simply the basics, food, clothing, 
shelter. I knew deep in my heart that I craved something at the time. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know one thing though. I did not want to repeat the toxic generational cycle of violence, substance, and domestic abuse that I grew up in. That I knew for sure. So I dared myself to prove them wrong. Because of this conscious choice, my kids are not starting in the back of the line like I did. They are privileged and can start the race at the starting line because I have even their playing field. I chose to change the narrative. How did I prove them wrong? I quickly learned that education was my passport to another world. I gravitated towards people that saw the potential in me and role models that I admired, such as the boxer Muhammad Ali. This alone changed and extended my thinking. I then became curious about the world. With all of the self-doubt and fears, I created mental roadblocks for myself, but I continued to push forward after high school and surrounded myself with people I admired because I wanted to be just like them or even better. These people became my mentors and taught me the ropes of a different social class and also taught me how to plan and achieve my goals. This is called networking. I still find myself doing it today because life is all about the human connection. I worked hard to fill in the educational gaps. I had to work twice as hard while others appear to be having a fun social life at the time. Do not be fooled by the facade others present. As Muhammad Ali said once, he who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. I risked a lot and it was all so worth it. As a result, I fell in love with education and decided to pay it forward. I am now living my dream. I have found what I was craving for, my passion, to be an educator and a role model to others. I challenged my mind and became a fighter, not a physical fighter, but a mental fighter. I compartmentalized my thumb and worked towards establishing a growth mindset. This is why I carry these boxing gloves they are in my office because they serve as a daily reminder of who I am, where I came from, and the work that I still need to do with our beautiful community. My message to you is very straightforward. We all have great stories to tell, and you will be creating your own, whether it is my story, Muhammad Ali's, the Obama's, Steve Jobs, Sonia Sotomayor, or your abuelita story. Use these great stories to learn from and use them to motivate you to keep pushing forward. As Steve Jobs once said, the ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. I know that I believe I'm crazy enough to change the world. I want you to be the alpha class the class that challenges the world like Muhammad Ali, one of the greatest boxers of all time. Ali was a passionate and intelligent man that always spoke his mind and was full of wisdom. I too want you to live a life full of wisdom. But while you are at it, take out the boxing gloves and knock them out because mama said knock you out. I am compelled to ask the class the following questions. How will you prove them wrong? How will you change the narrative? Class of 2020, I charge you to prove them wrong by challenging yourself to be the best at everything you do. Give it your all. Challenging yourself to find your passion to build a better world for tomorrow and pay it forward, not only to yourself, but to your community, 
Your community needs you. We need to hold each other accountable for a better future. This is your civic engagement. Having faith, because it is the lack of faith that makes people afraid of meeting challenges. I want you to be the greatest and live your dream. I want you to remember that the best revenge is massive success. And I have to repeat that. The best revenge is massive success. Define that success for yourself. As Muhammad Ali said once, I am the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. I figured that if I said it enough, I would convince the world that I really was the greatest. I sincerely wish you the best, and it has been my honor to serve you as your principal for the 2019-20 school year. I want you to show the world how great you can be. Class of 2020, I dare you to prove them wrong. Gladiator strong. Hello class of 2020, I'm Superintendent Wibby. On behalf of the Connecticut Technical Education and Career System Board and the District Central Office, I would like to offer our congratulations on your graduation. High school graduation is a huge milestone in your life and I hope you're tremendously proud of your accomplishments. We certainly are proud of you. I know that this is, that this is not how you pictured your high school graduation. It's not how any of us imagined the end of the school year. You may feel that you have missed out on many of the things that traditionally go along with finishing high school, but I'd like to shed some light on what you have gained. First, you've gained options and opportunities. Simply by electing to attend the technical high schools, you made a decision that has better prepared you for a career, further education, and life in general. Through your high school experience, you have gained independence, work ethic, the ability to balance a challenging schedule and critical thinking skills, among others. These skills and qualities that you have developed over the last four years are what employers value and doors will open for you because of them. You've gained grit, which is defined as firmness of mind or spirit or unyielding courage in the face of hardship. Over the past several months, you were faced with an unexpected adversity because of the pandemic, and you proved yourself capable of persevering and adapting. You have done extraordinary things in unprecedented times. Life has its ups and downs, and this grit will serve you well. You've gained a network, and not just your shop classmates, sports teams, or school staff, although they are very important in your life. Our graduates make up a large part of the state's workforce and business and industry across Connecticut recognize the talent inherent to the tech school grads. You are part of the technical high school family now and whatever path you choose to take, there is a network of people behind you ready to help reach your goals. And I'd like to leave you with a short Celtic blessing. May there always be work for your hands to do May your purse always hold a coin or two. May the sun always shine on your window pane. May a rainbow be certain to follow each rain. May the hand of a friend always be near you. May life fill your heart with gladness to cheer you. Congratulations, class of 2020, and we'll be seeing you. Our next speaker is class president, Kiana Torres. When I was a child, I spoke about childish matters, for I saw things like a child and reasoned like a child. But the day came when I matured and set aside my childish ways, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. It's time to put aside our childish thoughts. I'll be the first to say I was not sure if I'd be able to do this. I was not quite sure if I'd be able to give a speech at CCSU in front of you and your families. Even now, I'm not ready. 
But here I am reciting the speech, and more than ever, I'm craving for you guys to be right in front of me, laughing, yelling, talking, just being yourselves. Those of you who know me well know I'm not into sugarcoating, so you will not be getting any of that from me. I know that we came into this year fully expecting to have the same, if not a better, experience of what a senior year should be like. Senior skip day, prom, senior outing, and of course graduation. Just as fast as these things came into our sight, they were taken away, making nothing appear as it expected it to be. How else would our class go out? We definitely are a high maintenance group. We had to have some way that the other classes after us would remember us and that all the classes before us wish they were us. I remember hearing you guys say 2020 is the best graduating year. Well, in a way, you were right. We are completely unforgettable. I mean, we're going to be in history books. The class that had the longest spring, spring break in history. Our class literally shut down schools. Granted, it was all because of this virus, but if you try and look on the bright side, it is the ultimate senior prank. The whole world was involved. Is it too soon for that joke? I'll, ju I'll just move on. It's true we did not get the senior year we expected to, but we did have our first three and a half years of roaming the halls and getting yelled at by Ms. Feldman for being out of uniform. You all have your own different memories of school, some more bad than good, like the time we had to sadly mourn the death of our coach and chef, Chef Johnson. May he rest in peace. Or the time that we had to stand outside in the pouring rain because Chef Collier burned a batch of cookies. But even in these sad moments, there were ones like the time culinary started a water balloon fight when the bell rang. Sorry, Nate. Or the times that AJ walked around in the hallways with his sister's dress on or Bianca's clothes. And of course, the times that we killed each other over the last spicy chicken patty. Likewise, I know none of us are going to miss running around looking for Mr. Lynch, who was never in his office, or the dress code for Jim. I mean, how many times was I going to say that my navy blue sweatpants were not black? But with every one of these annoying moments, I will never trade a single one of them for something different. Our class definitely gave EC a run for their money, and I hope we continue to do this even after we walk across the stage. Whether that be trade, military, or college. I saw this video once, this preacher was talking about how people have not had time to mourn all the plans they made. Well, that's exactly what happened to us. He goes on to talk about how so many people have been saying this sentence. This year is trash, but I trust you. Hearing this, automat I automatically agreed. I trust things will be okay, but this year has been so trash for me. He continued leading into this concept that saying you trust things will be okay, but ending with this negative anecdote just keeps us stuck in this negative mindset. But when you flip the phrase from, I trust you, but this year is trash, to this year is trash, but I trust you, you're leaving room for something to actually change. When things don't look the way they should, when the world looks violent, scary, and like there's no way to improve, remind yourself of this. This is trash, but insert something positive that will never change. It'll remind us that when things don't necessarily look the way they should, you will always have this one thing that will always and will never change. It'll make all the difference. It has for me in this time where everything can be so completely unpredictable. I would, of course, like to take a few minutes to thank all the people I feel have helped me get to the place that I'm at today. I could not have done any of this without you. I would first like to thank my family, and I mean all of my family, from my culinary fam to my actual fam. If you've met my parents and they're a trip, then <laughs> your family. I would like to thank my sisters. For, thank you guys for hearing me rant all the time. I mean, what are sisters really for? Who needs a therapist when you have a sister? You guys have truly seen me grow from someone who hated going to school to someone who thrived there. Thank you for being a part of every hiccup and every accomplishment. I'm glad to have you, Ty, as an example. I'm so grateful to be an example for Serena and Mellon. Good luck to you guys in the next few years. Take notes. Ma, I'm sorry you didn't get to put me in a prom dress, but let's face it, you, had, you were gonna have had a problem putting me in it. I know how hard you and Pa work to get me everything I want, and I'm so grateful for it, even when it seems like I could care less. You guys will always be my number one fans, and I wouldn't have it any other way. You two are both such hard workers, and I'm sure you guys can agree 
that my teachers think I'm nothing short of hardworking. And I get that from both of you. From all those nights that Ma stayed up while I was sick, to the times that I missed the bus and Ba had to drive me to school. Thank you guys for everything. I love you so much and appreciate all you do. Now what's a thank you with thinking, without thanking all the people that had to deal with my attitude and sarcasm for 180 days? Jeff K, you know I do not think I have the words to say everything I have to say to you. But let's face it, I'm your favorite. Karina's a very close second, but I take the cake. You would never have an organized kitchen if it was not for me and my minor case of OCD. Nothing would get done if I wasn't yelling at Will to get his work done and telling Cameron to hurry up. You have taught me so much and I'm not just talking about theory wise. I'll miss having every controversial and transparent conversation with you and Cam at faculty range. You've been the only teacher to stick with me from the beginning. Others have come and gone, but you have remained the same. Thank you to my poor math teachers. You guys got the worst version of Kiana. I hate math. Now I will not lie to you, Ms. Wren, Mr. Rostein, and Mr. F. I still hate math. You did not make me like it, nor did you try to get me to, but you guys got me to pass. So you deserve a huge thank you because I know I'm not easy to teach. I get flustered and give up at the very first second I see a math problem. But you guys stuck through it. Granted, that's your job, but I like to think I was entertaining. Mr. F, I hope I will always be your favorite adopted student. Mr. Rossing, don't miss me too much. I will be back to steal some gum from you. And Ms. Wren, I'll know I'll see you at my mom's salon, so this isn't goodbye. Ms. Yoga, how could I forget about you? I came into EC thinking it was just another history class, but it was a college class, and I was completely wrong about it being like any other. You are the teacher that has pushed me in ways that I did not know I could be pushed. Every time I thought I, was up, I wasn't up for the challenge, you told me I was going to do fine and that I was being too hard on myself. I'm going to miss staying after class when the bell rang just to rant about how I didn't think I was going to get my work done on time. Thank you for always asking the most from us. And I can only say I'm more prepared for college than I ever thought I could. And that's greatly in part to you and all that you've done for me. Last but certainly not least, I want to thank all my friends. You guys have heard it all, every rant, every I'm tired of this teacher, all of it. Thank you guys for an amazing four years. I would not trade a single class lunch period, shop day, anything from, for a moment that I had with you. Coco and Cam, you guys endured the worst of it, my best friends. Every aspect of high school, you guys are right there with me. You two are my quiet little friends, but I brought out the loud in you because I made you so mad all the time. You can't get rid of me now though, so don't even try. I love you guys so much. Now that I've talked your ears off, and even though I cannot be with all 30, 133 of you today, even though I have to recite this speech to you through a screen, I'd like to impart whatever wisdom or insight I have to share with you in these last few moments we have together. So that way you can take it with you wherever you go. Alex does not count as math class. Students cannot buy cookies from Cafe Chibes. But if you give Will Koto a dollar and one of your cookies, he'll give them to you. And Ms. Wren's classroom will always be a safe haven if you need extra math help and a therapy session or two. E.C. Goodwin was our home for four years and will continue to be our home even after we're gone. It's like Ms. Yoga said, but then I think maybe it's, this is what makes you special. Maybe that means each and every one of you will forever be connected in some way because we never said goodbye. The connection was never broken. So with that being said, this is not goodbye, Goodwin family, but until we see each other again. I wish you all the very best. I can't wait to see how you'll shake up this world. They aren't ready for what we've got in store for them. So don't give up now. We did it. This is only the beginning, and we can't stop now. Thank you, Class of 2020. You truly made high school worth it all. It is with great honor to present to you a leader in the class of 2020 who advocated to have this platform to communicate a compelling message about the Black Lives Matter movement. Please help me welcome to the podium your class president, Kiana Torres. I would like to start off by saying this. Soy una orgullosa mujer latina que tiene que lidar con sus propias formas de racismo. Y no estoy avergonzado de quien soy. Finalmente, no estoy de acuerdo con la brutalidad policial. 
For those that do not understand Spanish, I just said that I am a proud Latina woman who has to deal with her own forms of racism, and I am not ashamed of who I am. But I am not okay with police brutality. With that being said, this whole movement is not about me, and it's not about my opinion. Quite frankly, it's not about you. It's about what's right. Everyone seems to think it's a black people thing, but it's not. Yes, black lives matter. Yes, the deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery all matter, and all the lives before them matter. But this movement, however you stand, however you see it, is not a black or white thing. It's a human thing. We live in the United States of America, but what is united about a country that sits on the neck of a man for eight minutes while he cries out that he cannot breathe? What is united about the fact that people had to go out into the streets protesting and looting to get the point across that the man that sat on his neck needed to be charged for what he did? There is nothing united about any of these things other than the fact that all over the country, all over the world, people came together to say that what has happened and what has been happening to people of color is not right. I say this not to spread fear that police are these horrible people because the reality is they are not. Yes, all over the news right now we see protests where where the police are setting up the protesters. Yet notice how you cannot see where the police are singing with the people, standing with the protests, just being there peacefully. The news wants you to see all these horrible things about these protests, but you have to pay attention to even the things they do not show. The job of the police is to protect and serve, and there are many who do just that. But to all those who do not see the things you should be, to all those who do not treat the uniform the way they should, it is not your job to decide who can live to see tomorrow and who cannot. I'm sorry, but you do not have that right. I'm sorry to the families that had to bury their daughter or son because an officer shot first, then asked questions. I'm sorry that no amount of words, no amount of money can bring back your loved ones. More importantly, I'm sorry that your families had to protest in the streets to get your point across because of the white supremacy this country was built on. I know saying this can cause many people to be angry, but just look at our history books. Our country was built upon the fact that Americans drove out anyone who they felt did not belong in the world they were trying to build. They started with Native Americans wiping out their tribes because they were too strong-willed to be pushed into slavery. They built on their land and called it America. When all this was said and done, they moved on to the African Americans and made them slaves for 400 years. They did all these things and yet still had the audacity to say that all men are created equal. Now believe me, I love being an American, but this is our history, isn't it? Our time to change history is now, and I mean, we're doing it already. I say this all to say that we are now going into the next phase of our lives. We are becoming adults, and we are going into this world where we can have our own opinions, our own thought process. This means that we can go and be whoever we want to be. We can have people who can change the world. There is a reason our generation is alive to see pandemics and protest and police brutality. I strongly believe is because we will grow to be the people that actually have something to say, something to do about all this. The Pledge of Allegiance says at the very end, with liberty and justice for all. Imagine a world where you get liberty and justice for every single person, no matter what the color of their skin is, no matter what they identify as, no matter what gender they are, no matter what they believe. Imagine a world where all lives actually do matter. There's nothing wrong with the statement, but there's something wrong when it isn't actually true. If every life did matter, then there would be no death where justice was not properly served. Let us be the generation that actually does make every life matter. We are going to have the world at our fingertips. When we get these diplomas and head into the real world, what are you doing with it? I had once asked my best friend what he would say if he had the attention of the world for 30 seconds, the whole world. His response was very simple, yet so easy that not many people think what to say it. He said, Jesus loves you, just like that. You may be wondering what that has to do with black lives, but it's very simple. When he phrased the question back to me, I was stumped. There may come a point in time where we have the attention of the whole world and may not know what to say. Please don't get stumped as I did in this hypothetical situation. Be bold like my friend. Say what others would never be able to say. Because I stand here today, and now I know what I would say if I had the attention of the whole world for 30 seconds. I would tell them that their life matters, that they are loved, and that their life is worth more than money can buy. 
I'm lucky to have had a chance to speak on a, such a platform that allows me to have a voice. So I encourage you, class of 2020, matter of fact, I encourage anyone who hears this, if you believe in something, if you believe in anything as strongly as I believe in things like this, do not allow yourself to be silenced. Someone in the world needs to hear what you have to say and fear and self-doubt, what other people think, should not make you feel as though you have to hold your tongue. Use the gifts inside of you to be the change you want to see. Gandhi had it right. Don't stay confined to the box people try to put you in. Make your own rules, build your own life. Make your life matter for those who cannot continue to make theirs matter. Thank you. Distinguished guests, parents, faculty, and friends, every Board of Education maintains a governing body responsible for establishing policy, requisites, and standards for graduation. E.C. Goodwin Technical High School's governance is granted under direct supervision of the State Board of Education. Through the principal's authority, I have duly examined the technical and academic records of this class and certify that they meet all requirements as set forth by the State Board of Education. Therefore, this class is eligible to receive a high school diploma. And now, please welcome back Kiana Torres for the traditional turning of the tassels. Will the E.C. Goodwin Technical High School Class of 2020 please stand? Would the Class of 2020 please move your tassels from right to left to signify your graduation from high school? Thank you, Kiana. A special thank you to all that assisted in making this a special day for our graduates. I would like to acknowledge the senior advisors, Ms. Gina Antonacci and Ms. Mary Beth Kelleher. In addition to our graduation advisors, Mr. Joe Granja and Mr. Rod Irizari. Mr. Murray for his work with the sound system and Mr. Barner for his video work. Nice job. I want to thank all of the Gladiator families for participating in our virtual graduation ceremony. I hope to see you and your families on June 18th and 19th. Gladiator strong.
thanks to their continuous efforts. I also want to I want to take this opportunity to thank all of the parents, parents and guardians here today for your support over the last four years as we work together to provide your children with an educationally rewarding and socially enriching high school experience. At this time, I would like to introduce those on stage with me. They include Principal Dr. Annabelle Diaz, Assistant Principal Darius Zunzik, and Senior Counsel Counselor Christopher Lynch. Students, as you leave the stage today, you will be given a rose. At some point after the graduation ceremony is over, I ask that you give that rose to someone special who helped you reach this day. Also, please take the opportunity for a formal graduation picture before you return to your vehicle. Every Board of Education maintains a governing body responsible for establishing policy requisites and standards for graduation. E.C. Goodwin's governance is granted under the Connecticut Technical Education and Career System State Board of Education. As the Assistant Principal to the Class of 2020, working under the supervision of CTEX Superintendent Jeffrey Wibby, I duly examined the technical and academic records of this class and certify that they meet all requirements as set forth by the Board of Education and are therefore eligible to receive a high school diploma. Now I would like to call Senior Counselor Christopher Lynch to the podium for the presentation and conferring of the culinary diplomas. Mr. Lynch. Thank you, Ms. White. Alex Jovan Cartagena. Ramsey 
Navarro. Samantha Delia Pacheco. Jocelyn Rodriguez. <laughs> Justina A. Rodriguez. Samantha Marie Rodriguez. Jovan Rosario. <laughs> Chastity Marie Sanchez. <laughs> Emilio Santiago. Ha, ha, ha.
Torres Davila. Karina I. Trammell. 